Partners in Population and Development, good day to you all. Welcome to the 2020 World Population Day and launch of the State of World Population Report. This is an auspicious occasion as we talk about important issues that affect our lives as a nation and as a global village. To provide the historical context about this day, the World Population Day was conceived in 1989 when the then Governing Council of the United Nations Development Program recommended the 11th July of every year be observed by the international community as World Population Day. A day to focus attention on the urgency and importance of population issues. Today, we join the rest of the world in commemorating this day to discuss a very important concern that has affected one and all, the COVID-19 crisis. With the theme, Putting the Brakes on COVID-19, How to Safeguard the Health and Rights of Women and Girls, this year's event highlights the reality that women, who account for the largest share of frontline health workers, are exposed to the pandemic. And as countries are on lockdown and health systems struggle to cope, Sexual and reproductive health services are being sidelined, and gender-based violence is on the rise. On this occasion, we also launched the 2020 State of World Population Report entitled Against My Will, defying the practices that harm women and girls and undermine equality. Because of many harmful practices affecting women and girls, tens of thousands of citizens have their health, rights, and future stolen. Some are forced into marriages as children, and still others are neglected or starved simply because they are females. So today, let us listen to messages from distinguished personalities as they share their insights about the issues in focus. To formally welcome us in this event, allow me to call on the Honorable Dr. Juan Antonio A. Perez III, under Secretary of Population and Development and Executive Director of the Commission on Population and Development or POPCO. Honorable Francisco T. Duque III, Secretary of the Department of Health. Honorable Rodora M. Bukoy, Chairperson of the Philippine Commission on Women. Honorable Karen Lucia S. Gomez Dumpit. Commissioner of the Commission on Human Rights, Mr. Gustavo Gonzalez, President Coordinator of the United Nations in the Philippines, Mr. Yori Cato, Country Representative of the United Nations Population Fund, Professor Paz Marquez, Team Leader of the UP Population Institute Research Team on Sexual Reproductive Health and Gender-Based Violence Estimates, Ms. Carmela Constantino, Sangguniang Kabataan Leader of Sarangani Province. To everyone watching us online, sa lahat po ng mga nakasubaybay sa Facebook, a pleasant morning to all. Isang mapagpalang umaga po sa ating lahat. It is my pleasure to formally open our local celebration of this year's World Population Day or WPD, which coincides with the official launch of the State of the World Population Report, or SWPR. While we are meeting in an unconventional manner, minus the fanfare from the usual warm bodies around, the circumstances do not diminish the significance of this occasion. This is because, despite the global health crisis we are facing now, the urgency and paramount nature of the issues surrounding the populations of our world today are matters we cannot simply ignore. For the pandemic we are facing is something that will ultimately bear on a great majority on the people of this planet, if not of our own nation, who are already feeling the adverse effects in their daily lives and decision making, especially with regard to family planning, as well as protecting the health and rights of every Filipina. This year's WPD theme encapsulates those ideas perfectly. It's all about putting the brakes on COVID-19, how to safeguard the health and rights of women and girls now. Personally, I find the theme very appropriate in the current setting, where mothers, female partners, as well as young women and children's health and rights 
are exposed to compromising situations. Institutions and every individual's way of life have come to a screeching halt these past few months. Surprisingly, a submicroscopic life form has altered modern civilization as we know it. And its effects have so far made the biggest blow to the established setups of humankind. Needless to say, healthcare structures, especially those dealing with sexual and reproductive health, have absorbed the most telling setbacks that resonate to the far reaches of their ecosystems. If there is an operative word in our year's theme, it would have to be the one in the end. Because now is the best time to act and pull our acts together in order to counteract the ill effects of the health man malady. While we put the brakes on COVID-19, the momentum we have built as stakeholders in population management of the Philippines over the years should not stop. Meanwhile, this year's SWPR title, Against My Will, Defying the Practices That Harm Women and Girls and Undermine Equality, for me, describes the disruption caused by the coronavirus disease 2019, which has crept steadily into homes and households, sowing discord and resulting into disadvantaged women and children who have become victims of gender-based violence, documented or otherwise. Without necessarily preempting its discussion later, the report actually covers a wide range of topics on various realities that countless girls all over the world undergo, with some that violate their personhood and ultimately redound to their future, which is far from being bright. Here in the Philippines, while our young girls do not necessarily undergo the same kind of physical ordeal or psychological torment, there are those in remote areas who are still subject to archaic social practices, such as child or prearranged marriages. Fortunately, there are legislations in place or bills being worked on which can curb these practices that deprive our young ones their inherent human rights. Still, we should not let our guard down. The grim reality of adolescent pregnancy still haunts us to this day especially in the time of COVID-19, which resonate from the sometimes concealed doings stemming from gender-based violence, not to mention the unspoken violence that innumerable women experience in the confines of their household, concealed in the din of the day and the darkness of night as the scourge of the pandemic sweeps over us. Likewise, the current community quarantine conditions might take its toll on maternal health, directly or indirectly, given the high number of women with unmet need for family planning, resulting to un unintended pregnancies. The University of the Philippines Population Institute and the United Nations Population Fund foresee a possible population boom in the country next year, where we might welcome 2 million babies in our midst. That is, if we fail to address the reduction of services that our medical systems are currently experiencing. Despite the challenges, I can say that there are policies, measures, laws, and numerous other efforts in place adherent to our commitments to the Nairobi Summit of the International Conference on Population and Development, where the Philippines was a staunch supporter as a signatory 25 years ago. While there are observable great strides in our population and development goals, more needs to be done, especially at this time when COVID-19 can derail the work we have striven so hard to accomplish. That said, the esteemed personalities whose names I mentioned earlier will discourse in detail on the previously mentioned topics, with specific focus on family planning, women's health, and maternal health as well as gender-based violence, including a testimony on those. I also look forward to the ceremonial handover of the copy of the 2020 SWPR at the end of this program. 
Notwithstanding our physical limitations today, our virtual gathering is still a testament to our individual and collective commitments as population, health, and development managers of our country and in this side of the globe. Nonetheless, it is my sincere wish that we all have a meaningful 2020 World Population Day celebration. Thank you and good morning. Maraming salamat at magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Thank you, Undersecretary Perez. Popcom is pleased to be working with a valued partner, the United Nations Population Fund or UNFPA, in organizing today's event. Today, we are fortunate to have as one of our speakers, the new United Nations Resident Coordinator and Humanitarian Coordinator in the Philippines. He came into the country just a few weeks ago, fresh from his stint as Director of the Business Development and Resource Mobilization Division at the Food and Agriculture Organization. It is my honor to introduce to you Mr. Gustav Gonzalez, the United Nations Resident Coordinator in the Philippines. Good morning to all of you. It's uh, indeed a great pleasure to welcome all of you and have the privilege of opening the celebration of the 2020 World Population Day. As you know, this event is organized by the Commission on Population and Development and the United Nations uh, Population Fund. Um, as you know, I'm the new UN Resident Coordinator in Philippines, and I'm bringing with me the support of 18 UN entities for the successful celebration of this World Population Day. Uh, this 2020 World Population Day is taking place in a very particular circumstances, and at least for three reasons. Number one, this year marks also the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, that in practical terms is also the anniversary of a long-standing partnership between the Philippines and the UN by the fact, as you know, that Philippines is one of the 51 original founding members. Number two, this year we start the last decade leading to the 2030 agenda, a decade where we are expected to achieve historic goals, a decade where we can demonstrate that, in fact, we were the generation that ended poverty and hunger. Number three, we celebrate this World Population Day in a context of an exceptional global pandemic that is affecting, as you know, the population of the planet, without exception. As mentioned by the UN Secretary General, this is a health crisis, but also a human crisis. A human crisis that has unveiled our fragilities and exacerbated a number of inequalities. A crisis that is exceeding the capacities of response of any single actor, any single country. More than ever, partnership, alliances, and coalitions are required. Since the beginning of this crisis, the UN has been very active and launched a global comprehensive response plan to the COVID-19 with three pillars. One, a large-scale and comprehensive health response, including support efforts to accelerate testing, diagnosis, treatment, and COVID-19 vaccine, all of them affordable and available to everyone everywhere. Two, a wide range of efforts to address the most immediate socioeconomic, humanitarian, and also human rights impact of the crisis, to ensure the continuity of vital services, households and businesses, supply chain, and public service delivery. And finally, a recovery process to build forward better to address climate change, inequalities, exclusion, gaps in social protection systems, and many other fragilities that have been exposed by the pandemic. Our United Nations team in Philippines is presently working with national institutions and other partners on these three pillars, and I'm very proud for the initial results. What we have been observing in the country and globally is the tremendous impacts of the pandemic on women and girls. Looking after the health of women that not only means ensuring their protection from the pandemic, but also ensuring that women are able to access a wide range of services, including reproductive health and family planning information and services as a matter of choice and human right. 
It also means that women and girls are free from gender-based violence and other harmful practices, including child marriage, that keep women and girls away from fulfilling their full potential in a dignified way. Today, I would like to express the United Nations deep appreciation and gratitude to all the frontline health workers, especially those women who account for the 75% of the world's total health workforce. As part of the United Nations in the Philippines, you know that UNFPA works with national and local governments and civil society in upholding the rights of women and girls across three transformative goals. Ending unmet need for family planning, ending preventable maternal death, and ending gender-based violence and other harmful practices against women and girls. Dear partners and colleagues, I would like to thank and congratulate UNFPA and all of you uh, on this occasion of the World Population Day and the launch of the State of World Population Report 2020. I wish you a great success. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez, for your very insightful message. I do agree that the United Nations is and continues to be a valued partner of the Philippine government in this fight against COVID-19. As Mr. Gonzalez declared, the fight against COVID-19 is a fight towards upholding the rights of women and girls following the three transformative results, also called the three zeros, namely zero unmet need for family planning, zero preventable maternal deaths, and zero gender-based violence and other harmful practices. To give a sound evidence base for responding to the three zeros in the Philippines, UNFPA and the University of the Philippines Population Institute are conducting a study on estimating the impact of the COVID-19 crisis on women and girls in the country. And today, we will listen to the results of this study, which highlights key indicators that align with the three zeros. Let me call on Professor Maria Paz Marquez of UPPI, the team leader of the research team, to make the presentation. Good day, I'm Maria Paz and Marquez of the University of the Philippines Population Institute. On behalf of my colleagues at the Institute, I will be presenting the results of our study entitled The Potential Impact of the COVID-19 Pandemic on Sexual and Reproductive Health in the Philippines. The COVID-19 global outbreak is challenging health systems worldwide, including the delivery and access to essential family planning and maternal health services. Studies on the global impact of the pandemic on SRH services, particularly in low-income and middle-income countries whose health systems are rather vulnerable, show that millions of women may be indirectly affected by the virus. The ECQ and GCQ implemented in the country since the middle of March this year and the attendant economic slowdown, travel restrictions, and physical distancing may have also affected the availability of our workforce and supplies and the demand for and access to these vital health services. It is within this context that the study was conceptualized to quantify the potential impact of the pandemic on key indicators of family planning, maternal health, and gender-based violence, with the aim of providing evidence base for decision makers towards more focused response strategies. The study adapted the methodologies employed by the study shown earlier that generated global level estimates. Specifically, we employ the Good Macro Institute's adding it up method and the statistical modeling tool called Live Save Tool or LIST, which is a module under the Spectrum computer software package. We have, of course, developed our own assumptions regarding SRH service coverage reduction to suit local context and employed Philippine data mainly from the 2015 census, the 2015 census-based population projections, and the series of national demographic and health surveys. The assumptions and scenarios that we use to generate the estimates are detailed in the technical brief that we will be released by UNFPA. The estimates that I will be presenting represent the entire year of 2020, assuming a total of 9.5 months quarantine period. 
We aim to show in this presentation what could happen if the community quarantine will continue until December this year. The greatest indirect impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in terms of absolute numbers is manifested in the number of women with unmet need for family planning. About 3.1 million women of reproductive age are expected to have an unmet need for contraception in 2020. We estimate that an additional 2 million women will have an unmet need for FP if the quarantine will continue until the end of the year, resulting to a total of nearly 5.2 million women. This additional number represents a 67% increase in the number of Filipinas with unmet need for contraception that may be attributed to the quarantine-induced reduction in the coverage of FP supply and services. This service reduction would result to around 218,000 women for every month under quarantine. The increase in the number of women with unmet need for contraception would necessarily result to an increase in the number of unintended pregnancies. From the baseline figure of 1.8 million, we can expect an additional 751,000 unplanned pregnancies that may be attributed to the indirect effect of the pandemic for a total of 2.56 million over the course of the year. This additional number represents a 42% increase. Approximately 79,000 additional women will have unintended pregnancies this year owing to the current pandemic situation. The 2020 baseline estimate for maternal mortality is 2,600. The disruptions to health services caused by the pandemic may result to an additional 570 maternal deaths for a total of about 3,200. The 570 additional deaths represent a 26% increase that could be indirectly attributed to COVID-19 pandemic response strategies. For every month under quarantine, we can expect an additional 60 deaths to women due to pregnancy and childbirth-related causes. The incidence of intimate partner violence has been declining in the past several years, based on data from the series of NDHS, as well as the reported cases from the Philippine National Police. However, movement restrictions, overcrowding in dwellings, stress and anxiety about economic or job loss are factors that may increase women's exposure to the risk of intimate partner violence during this time of the pandemic. We estimate that around 724,000 women this year will experience physical or sexual violence perpetrated by their spouses or living partners. If such violence will increase by 20% during the quarantine period, we can expect an additional 115,000 women to be involved in abusive relationships, resulting to a total of 839,000. For every month under quarantine, about 12,100 women could experience violence at the hands of their intimate partners. In conclusion, the community quarantine induced by the pandemic is expected to have adverse impacts on various aspects of the SRH of Filipino women. The magnitude of the potential impact is substantial. If the community quarantine continues until the end of 2020, they can expect for every month of quarantine, as much as 218,000 women have unmet need for family planning, 79,000 unintended pregnancies, 12,100 women to experience intimate partner violence, and 60 maternal deaths. While the government remains focused in the containment of the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, it should not neglect other equally essential health services, including SRH. The significant potential impact we have shown underscores the need for a sustained provision of essential family planning and maternal health services, as well as social and protective networks during the period of quarantine. The challenge then is for the government and the private sector to devise innovative ways to ensure continuity in the delivery of these vital services, even amidst the COVID-19 crisis. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Marquez, for the presentation. And our huge thanks to UPPI Research Team and the persons of UPPI Director Dr. Grace Cruz, Dr. Maria Medea Cabamalan, and Dr. Elmo Laguna 
for their technical expertise in the conduct of this study. Following the discussion on the data about the three transformative results, let us listen to key high-level government officials who will speak about the country's initiatives to help achieve these results during this time of pandemic. May I mention that in our invitation for this event, we asked everyone to raise questions that they wanted our speakers to answer and these questions have been pre-shared to them to guide their messages. To provide continuity to the giving of messages, allow me to introduce all of them here. This first speaker will be the Honorable Francisco Duque III, Secretary of Health, who will speak about family planning. Secretary Duque will be followed by the Honorable Chairperson of the Philippine Commission on Women, Dr. Rodora Bukoy, who will talk about women's health, including reproductive health. And last, but certainly not the least, we will listen to the Honorable Commissioner of the Commission on Human Rights, Commissioner Karen Gomez Dumpi. Department of Health, I would like to extend our warmest greetings this World Population Day. While we celebrate the many gains we have collectively made in the area of population development, we are equally grounded by the realities of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on our people. The COVID-19 pandemic has shaken our health system, disrupting access to family planning information and services, as well as sexual and reproductive health more broadly. The DOH issued policies to secure the continuous provision of essential health and family planning services and the promotion of self-care interventions for sexual and reproductive health. Notwithstanding the challenges of mobility restrictions, we upheld the minimum initial service package for reproductive health in crisis situations, ensuring the uninterrupted supply of commodities to all regions by working closely with local government units and PAPCOM. Community volunteers were mobilized to provide a three-month supply of pills and condoms to clients. And on top of this, innovations of localities such as the family planning on wheels brought family planning commodities to the doorsteps of clients. These interventions resulted in the increased uptake of family methods in primary care facilities. In fact, the use of progestin-only pills and male condoms were higher during the community quarantine than earlier in the year. Our ongoing fight against COVID-19 will be long and hard as health systems shift in the face of these extraordinary times, but now more than ever, we uphold that no one should be left behind. As we shift into a primary care-led system, family planning and the range of essential reproductive health services will indeed be closer to home. Once again, Happy World Population Day! Mabuhay po tayo lahat!
pregnant women need to take care of their health because COVID virus can be easily transferred from one person to another. Second, because uh, pregnant women are considered vulnerable because they need to take care and protect their own health and also that of their unborn babies. In addition, there is a tendency that comprehensive sexual and reproductive health services are neglected in public health emergencies as we struggle to meet competing needs. It is therefore important that these women be in good health to avoid falling ill requiring medical assistance which may not be as uh, readily available if there was no pandemic. According to UNICEF, pregnant women, new mothers, and newborns are greeted by harsh realities of lockdowns and curfews, such as the provision of limited quarantine pass, health centers overwhelmed with response efforts, supply and equipment shortages, and a lack of sufficient skilled birth attendants as health workers. Last May, PCW received a report that involved the timely death, untimely death of two women due to birth-related complications and denial of timely medical interventions by several health facilities. Clearly, while our efforts are geared towards the national health emergency, we must not forget that maternal death and reproductive health are our concerns with or without the pandemic that our country is committed to bring maternal mortality rate down to 90 per 100,000 live births, according to SD, our SDG commitment. As the Oversight Agency on Women's Empowerment and Gender Equality, PCW sought the assistance of the DOH to investigate these cases. We are happy to know that, uh, to note that DOH acted swiftly to address the concern. Last May 28, the DOH issued Department Memorandum Number 2020-0261 or the Interim Guidelines on the Continuous Provision of Maternal Health Services during COVID-19 pandemic. Post-pandemic, uh, we recommend that recovery efforts should be made through a gender lens because COVID-19 may impact women and men differently. Therefore, our actions and strategies should be able to address the varying sexual and reproductive health needs. Um, we also recommend the increased participation of women in the decision-making process and in the recovery efforts. Again, because men and women have varying needs, it is important that women are proportionately represented in the decision process so their needs are properly addressed. We also recommend collection of sex disaggregated data to better plan and map out gender responsive interventions and programs. We also recommend that we ensure that women and girls receive a quality education, information, counseling, and services related to sexual and reproductive health. We also recommend that we ensure the availability of services to protect women and girls and in these emergency situations against all forms of physical and sexual abuse, particularly domestic violence. Lockdowns and enforced social distancing measures heightens the exposure to violence and abuse by perpetrators within the home. As PCW, we call upon the different stakeholders to ensure that no one should be left behind, and that includes pregnant women. Thank you.
Commission on Human Rights is pleased to be with you today as we observe the 2020 World Population Day and the launch of the State of the World Population Report. In 2017, the National Demographic Health Survey reports that one out of four married women in the Philippines have experienced violence, and only a third of those seek help. Last year, the Commission's mapping of the gender-based violence legal referral mechanisms has documented the continuing gaps in accessing justice in GBB cases. These include the lack of information and knowledge of the laws, accessibility and availability of services, especially for women with disabilities, women in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, and other women facing multiple and intersecting forms of discrimination. Other gaps include the difficulty of referrals for psychosocial and shelter services, lack of sensitivity of service providers, and lack of support for livelihood and economic independence. These initial reports were also echoed in the Commission's 2019 National Inquiry on the Reproductive Health of Women with Disabilities, which highlighted physical, communication, and attitudinal barriers faced by women with disabilities in reporting and seeking justice in GBB cases. This was the situation prior to COVID-19. In this public health crisis, the barriers that women and girls usually encounter are multiplied and exacerbated. The imposition of containment measures put many women and girls at risk of further violence. Current data of the Philippine National Police and the Women and Children Protection Unit of the Department of Health show a disturbing decrease of reported cases of GBV. For violations of the anti bow law, the decrease is at 39.9% and for rape, it's at 56.25%. Data from the 23 hospitals of the WCPU also reveal a drop of 89% from March to April of this year. For the Commission, these are not indicators of lowered incidence of GBV, but of the multiplied barriers in accessing justice. Our online reporting portal for GBV, which went live on the 27th of April, have documented not only reports of GBV during the enhanced community quarantine, but also reports of women whose complaints were not received by duty bearers and those who were told to pursue their complaints and return after the ECQ. The breakdown of referral mechanisms could be brought about by various factors, but primarily because of the focus on COVID response. The overburdened frontliners, for instance, like the Barangay Vow officers and the city social workers who double as COVID monitors, relief packers or distributors, or social amelioration officers, to difficulties faced by women themselves, restrictions on mobility, single quarantine passes per household, having to live with their abusers, absence of transportation services, among many others. For these reasons, it is crucial for the Commission, as the Gender Ombud, to continue issuing advice and recommendations to government on ensuring effective, prompt, and survivor-centered response to GBV. We have issued, together with several agencies like the Population Commission, the Department of Health, the Department of Interior and Local Government, the Philippine Commission on Women, a call to ensure GBB response. We have sent letters to provide guidance and we are working on a joint memorandum circular with the Department of Interior and Local Government. An effective measure post-pandemic and during the new normal includes a response to GBV. This is the only way we can put the brakes on COVID-19 to safeguard the health and rights of women and girls now. Thank you very much. Our huge thanks to Secretary Duque, Chair Bukoy, and Commissioner Dumpit for their messages. Let us also listen to the insights of a young leader whose advocacy on teenage pregnancy, child marriage, and other issues affecting girls has brought her to be a popular speaker in various fora in the regions and in the country. And I refer to the Sangguniang Kabataan leader from the province of Sarangani, Ms. Carmela Constantino. 
Hi, good morning. I'm Carmela M. Constantina, the SK Federation President of the Municipality of Malungon and also a bridging leader in Sarangani Province. So, I hope everyone is safe and secured in this time of pandemic. So, I will be talking about my YLGP journey as a young leader and how did it help me in prioritizing and solving the teenage pregnancy problem in my community. After 2017, after our municipality found out that one of the root causes of teenage pregnancy is the practice of forced marriages in tribal communities. The parents and the family of a young girl still believes that it is for the girl's future that she will be sold. So sa YLGP journey ko po, na-realize ko that I have a bigger role to play in protecting these young girls from the, from the problems or the arising issues of forced marriage in our municipality. During my deep dive session, I realized that some of these girls did not know what they are doing or what are they doing will give them a child or they will become a teen mom. It saddens me because it has been a norm in indigenous people community na okay lang na 10 to 17 years old ka mabuntis kasi yun naman yung nangyayari din sa mga kapitbahay mo. It saddens me because I had the privilege to go to good schools and get educated but I want to use this privilege to help and inform my co-youth that life does not end there. There is life outside it and outside their community and they have to be educated. Upon listening to the young girls during my deep dive activity, I realized that these girls have goals and goals and dreams din naman na Gusto nila maging teacher, gusto nila maging police, and etc. So, I was teary-eyed when I heard them talk about their dreams because akala ko wala na silang gustong marating sa buhay. But then, if they are given the right the right opportunity to be um, to attain their goals and dreams in life, they will really grab it. Yun nga lang po, sa panahon ngayon, hindi po nila maiwan-iwan yung mga anak nila. So, they are nakatay up na po sila ngayon sa kanilang bahay, nag-aalaga ng bata. And, but I hope uh, we will give opportunity for these young parents. The closure of health facilities prevents pregnant women from accessing antenatal checkups, exacerbates barriers to young people's limited access to adolescents' sexual and reproductive health information and services, the elderly, PWDs, and people living with HIV and AIDS from other health checkups and or services, and affects women's access to family planning services. Even for facilities that remain open, commuting to and from the facility presents a challenge because of the fear of infection while in transit, in addition to lack of transport options due to the community quarantine. Pregnant women also fear getting infected at the health facilities, which may increase home deliveries. In this case, it will result in a rise in unwanted pregnancies, maternal mortality, and morbidity an increase in unmet need for modern contraception, unprotected sexual activities, and other reproductive health concerns. Another emerging crisis is the shadow pandemic, the violence and abuses against women and girls happening usually behind closed doors. These women and girls are at home with their abusers, trapped and with nowhere to go. Some predators are lurking behind the computer screens where the youth is subjected to perform sexual acts at times in the knowledge of relatives or family members. Acute mental health issues among health workers and the broader population as a result of the negative impact of the community quarantine need to be addressed. While the Philippines is a strong nation, a lot is needed to be done. The United Nations Population Fund in the Philippines calls its private and government partners and the general public to join us in making sure that women and girls are protected. Work with us in protecting women and young people, providing uninterrupted life-saving essential health services for SRH, GBV, and MHPSS, 
evidence-based SRHR and GBV planning and coordination and protection of health front liners, reaching to women and other vulnerable groups through risk communications, community engagement, and mitigation of the social and economic impact of COVID-19. Devising innovations to better respond to GBV amid COVID-19 at the community levels. Tracking and preventing online sex trafficking affecting young people. Enhancing social safety nets and promoting Bangsamoro women's participation amid COVID-19. Cash-based incentives to enhance social safety nets for women and girls doubly affected by COVID-19 and other natural disasters. Caring for the mental health of GBV survivors, frontline service providers, and persons with disabilities. Studying the impacts of the pandemic for better decision-making. Analyzing the impact of COVID-19 on young Filipinos and the Philippines SDGs. Estimating the impact of COVID-19 on key SRHR outcomes in the Philippines. Modeling a post-COVID-19 scenario for young people, women, and the elderly in the Philippines. Strengthening the monitoring capacity of the Department of Health through staff augmentation. Prioritizing the tracking of COVID-19 impact on the unique vulnerabilities of women and girls. Contact UNFPA in the Philippines and let's work together to protect, support, and empower women and young people. Thank you everyone for staying with us thus far in this program. Now we are going to witness a simple turnover of the Global State of World Population Report to government. The turnover will be made by Mr. Yori Kato, Country Representative of the United Nations Population Fund, and will be received by the Honorable Undersecretary Juan Antonio Perez III of POPCOM on behalf of government. But before that, let us watch this video. Traditional leaders are FGM promoters. Most of them have received an FGM education, but they are still fussy, and they know that FGM is illegal. Saya menyunat bayi itu dengan cara menjepit klitoris atau bagian sensitif bayi bayi baru lahir. Saya jepit. There is a common belief that women's sexuality is beyond reason. We should begin to think of FGM as an issue that pertains to women's sexuality and the desire to control it. मेरे को ये तो पता नहीं था तीन बच्चे हैं पेट में तो डॉक्टर ने अल्ट्रासाउंड के बाद ये बताया कि फीमेल चाइल्ड है तीनों वो कहते अबॉर्शन करवा लो चाहे घर छोड़ दो मैंने घर छोड़ दिया मैं नहीं गई माय मदर यूज्ड टू से इफ इफ शी डिडंट हैविंग अ बर्स फॉर द लास्ट टू बॉयज शी वुड बी अबंडेंट ऑफ देयर ओन मदर इन लॉ In the Caribbean in general, and certainly here, men like to say, after 12 is lunch. For a long time, 12 meant you were an adult. Before I married him, I was like a person and I had an idea of like who I wanted to be. And after I married him, I just didn't even feel like a person anymore. I just felt like, you know, I was somebody's property. Friends, we are nearing the end of the program. We hope you've learned something from the messages spoken and the videos that were presented today. And what better way to close this event than to listen to the country representative of the United Nations Population Fund and co-organizer of this annual event for his closing remarks. May I call on Mr. Yori Kato. Good morning to you all. I am extremely impressed and honored to listen to many insightful remarks. 
discussions and video presentation today in this virtual event that combined both the commemoration of this year's World Population Day and also the launching of UNAP's Global State of World Population Report 2020 in the Philippines. On behalf of the co-organizers of today's event, the Philippine Commission on Population and Development, POPCOM, led by Honorable Undersecretary and Executive Director, Dr. Juan Antonio Perez Azar, and the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, in the Philippines, I'd like to express our deep appreciation and gratitude to all of you who joined us today online and all of the distinguished speakers and discussants for sharing such insightful messages. Today's discussions reminded me of Ms. Sam Guro, a local youth development officer from Lanao del Sur, who told us that she had grown up seeing her classmates married even before 15 years of age and drop out from school to raise a family and work at home. Sam's own mother was engaged when she was just four years old and her cousin likewise just eight years old. In the Philippines, even before the outbreak of COVID-19, one out of six Filipino girls married before 18. And because the effects of this COVID-19 pandemic and quarantine measures are disrupting those efforts to end child marriage, we may actually see even a further increase in child marriage. And Sam told us, no, these girls should be studying at school, enjoying their own adolescence, acquiring education and skills to achieve their dreams, enjoy the right to control their own bodies and the right to decide when to get married. And Sam told us that she is not going to stop until she sees no child marriage in her community. UNFP headquarters has been issuing this annual state of world population report since 1978, when the world population was 4.3 billion, and the world population report 2020, with the world population of 7.8 billion this year, is entitled Against My Will, dedicated to all the women and girls in the world who suffer from harmful practices like child marriage, and to all those who have been fighting like our friend Sam to put an end to these harmful practices that are hampering women and girls from reaching their full potential. As the world today, including the Philippines, is experiencing the fastest growing and unprecedented public health crisis, I would like to express our deepest condolences to anybody who lost their loved ones to COVID-19 and pay our respect to and tribute to all Filipinos working and fighting against the spread of the pandemic, especially the frontline workers. The COVID-19 crisis affects everyone's lives and livelihoods, but the pandemic is also revealing the pre-existing underlying gender inequality and making the unique vulnerabilities faced by women and girls even worse. According to the recent analysis that UNFP conducted with the University of the Philippines Population Institute, UPPI, about the impacts of COVID-19 and quarantine on women's and girls' sexual and reproductive health and rights, maternal death, unintended pregnancy, unmet need for modern contraceptives, and gender-based violence, such as domestic abuse and child marriage, can all increase significantly compared to pre-COVID in 2019. And this is why the theme of this year's World Population Day is putting the brakes on COVID-19, how to safeguard the health and rights of women and girls now. We in UNFA Philippines, as part of the UN country team led by the resident coordinator, Mr. Gustavo Gonzalez, renew our commitment to doing everything that we could to assist the government and people of the Philippines to build back better from the COVID-19 crisis and achieve the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030, including by pursuing three transformational goals, namely to realize a country where no women and girls would have to die giving life, a country where every pregnancy is intended, ending unmet need for family planning, as Mr. President Duterte himself is calling for, and a country where everyone would live in safety and dignity, especially free from sexual and gender-based violence and child marriage. In closing, please allow me to quote the words of the Executive Director of UNFPA, Dr. Natalia Kane, who said, We will not stop until the rights, choices, and bodies of all women and girls are fully their own. Ladies and gentlemen, we will do our part. I will do my part. 
And I hope that you can also do your part as well. We can do it. We ought to do this together. I implore, especially my fellow men and boys. Once again, thank you also very much for joining today's event to commemorate the World Population Day 2020 and launch the UNIPA State of World Population Report in the Philippines. Maraming salamat po. Abuhay. Thank you, Mr. Kato, for the closing message. And that brings to a close the 2020 World Population Day and launch of the State of World Population Report event. Good day and stay safe, everyone. This has been your host, Mylene Mirasol Kirai, the Assistant Division Chief of the Communications Division of Popcom.